know, and I think it's because of the, the desire for power, that the, the left wants power because that is essentially their state of grace and their, <laughs> their secular religion they want to run. Hey, folks, this is James Tracy. And, uh, you know, the news over the past week or so, past several days, has really not been reporting on a lot of very important stories, including a major, major storm with hurricane force winds in the Midwest just taking place within the past couple of days, as well as what Attorney General William Barr has said concerning the growing revolution in our streets. I wanted to talk a bit about that, and so let's get right to it. This is something I recorded last night, late night. Hey folks, this is James Tracy, memoryholeblog.org. I probably don't have to introduce myself anymore on this channel because most everyone who comes here knows me, uh, but if you do find the material here helpful, useful, informative, please don't forget to hit the like button below and share as you see fit and comment, please. Um, provide those comments. I do appreciate the feedback and I do read everything. Some things on my mind tonight, um, in particular, what's going on in our country, the civil breakdown, the rioting in the streets um, by the likes of uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa, two overtly communist organizations. And I think that probably many of us, particularly in our middle age, who are in their 40s and 50s at the very least, may have always said to themselves, a communist revolution will never take place here, not in the United States. And yet, it arguably is transpiring right now. It didn't begin with George Floyd. It began back in March when the World Health Organization and the communist who leads it declared a global pandemic. And granted, our country has not been devastated by warfare, by modern weaponry, like many third world nations that uh, this country has uh, regrettably devastated, but uh, we have been and are being devastated economically and perhaps that is a greater type of devastation than militarily. Um, when I was um, back in my 20s, quite some time ago, and uh, living in California, I uh, dated a young woman who uh, we were about the same age, and um, she was an immigrant from Cambodia. And so um, she grew up in the 1970s and um, she grew up and endured the killing fields in that country. And uh, just a, a wonderful person. But what she had to go through in part uh, because her father was a high ranking government official in the Law Nol regime. That was the regime that succeeded Prince Sihanouk in Cambodia and was uh, propped up by the Central Intelligence Agency. Well, when the United States pulled out of Vietnam, it did not support Cambodia. And so Cambodia succumbed to the Khmer Rouge. It's a long story, but that country was devastated because of the, con the constant bombing that was taking place by the United States. And so when the Khmer Rouge marched into Phnom Penh, um, her father was marched off. He was taken captive. And um, her, her three brothers, and her mother never saw their father again. And they imagine that he was likely worked to death in the killing fields. And they almost miraculously 
made it here to the United States after having lived for over three years under the Khmer Rouge. The women, especially the younger women, had to shave their heads uh, to keep from being raped, um, to, to, to diminish their beauty and their appeal. It was hell on earth. And um, very few of the younger generations, people in their teens, 20s, and 30s, really know anything about the horrors of communism. And yet, just a couple of days ago, Attorney General Barr was on Fox News, he was on Mark Levin, and he actually explained, in no uncertain terms, how Antifa and how Black Lives Matter are far-left groups, are communist, and he actually used the term Bolshevik. Now, there's a whole separate history that we could we could discuss, but it it encompasses this communist movement uh, that uh, has been, you know, really around arguably since the French Revolution, but at least in the 20th century, since the um, um, since the early 1900s. Um, so these things are important in terms of keeping in mind, and I just wanted to play an excerpt from Attorney General Barr's remarks on this program, and it has not been widely, his remarks have not been widely reported at all, which is concerning, to say the least, um, the fact that we have the top law enforcement officer in the country talking about what's taking place on our streets, and the media are more or less covering for it. I just want to play an excerpt from that. And um, I'm going to call the night here because it's late. So once again, if you do appreciate this material, hit the like button below. Take care. And God bless. Bye-bye. Place safety. Let me read right. something to you. Gatestone Institute, International Policy, um, about Antifa. I don't think people really understand Antifa. And they say, empirical and anecdotal evidence shows that Antifa is in fact highly networked, well-funded, has a global presence. It is a flat organizational structure with dozens and possibly hundreds of local groups. And by the way, the oldest group is in Portland. They say Antifa's stated long-term objective both in America and abroad, and it got its birth in Europe, England, then Germany, then the United States, is to establish a communist world order and by the way, they, this information is put out. It's not like we're conspiracy theorists or so forth. The, in the United States, Antifa's immediate aim is to bring down the demise of the Trump administration. It's an attack on capitalism. They say they're attacking fascism when they're Marxist fascists, such, such thing. To bring down the Trump administration. It's interesting that one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter said that one of her focuses is to bring down the Trump administration. What is it about the Trump administration that stands in their way? Well, I think they would be, you know, generally for bringing down any administration. They, they are a revolutionary group that is interested in, in some form of socialism, communism. They're essentially Bolsheviks. Their tactics are, are fascistic. Uh, and your description of them is consistent with I, what I've seen. Uh, with the Trump administration, you know, a lot of it has been the demonization of the Trump administration from day one. I went back and I watched his victory speech after election night. People should go back and look at it. It was very measured. It was a very statesmanlike speech. He offered the olive branch. He praised Hillary Clinton, thanked her for all her service to the country, talked about working together to make things better for the American people. That was the day he won, and from that point forward, uh, there's been the resistance. They were trying to impeach him from day one. They have done everything they can. They've shredded the norms of our system uh, to do what they can to drive him from office or to debilitate his administration. Uh, and I think it's because of the, the desire for power, that the, the left wants power because that is essentially their state of grace and their, <laughs> their secular religion. They want to run people's lives so they can design utopia for all of us. And that's what, 
you know, that's what turns them on. And it's the, it's the lust for power. And they weren't expecting Trump's victory, and it outrages them.